Hello everyone. This is a Python while loop tutorial. So first things first. In Python, a for loop and a while loop can be used just about interchangeably. However, there are different benefits and drawbacks with both. So for a Python for loop, it's good for cycles which have a known number of iterations. Whereas a while loop is really good when you really just don't know how many iterations you'll need. Okay? So let's get to coding. So for this piece of code over here, I initialize the variable count to the value zero. For every while loop, it first starts with a condition. So count was initialized to zero and a while loop will keep on going until the condition is evaluated to false. So initially count, which is zero is less than or equal to two. So we go through the indented code below. So we print out the value of count, which is zero, and then we increase the value of count by one. Then we go back up to the condition. So one is less than or equal to two. So we go down to the indented code and print out count, which is one. We then increment count by one again. So count is now two, and two is less than or equal to two. So this is true again. We print out count, which is two. We then increment count again by one. So count is now three. So we go back to the top and three is not less than or equal to two. So this condition up here is now false. And then we just go on with the rest of the code. Okay. So in this case, we'll never print out three um, because for when count is three, this condition over here is false and it just goes through the rest of your Python code, okay? So in short, if you want a loop to end at some point, you have to make the condition false, okay? So if for some reason you don't want to make the condition false eventually, a good strategy to use is to include break statements in your code that your code will eventually run into, okay? So for this code over here, we're gonna be utilizing a break statement. So we first initialize count to the value zero, and then we run into the conditional again, and zero is less than or equal to five, okay? This is gonna be false, so we're not gonna evaluate the code below, which is the break statement. We then increment count by one. So count is now one and we print that out. So then we evaluate the condition again and one is less than or equal to five. So then we go down below and then we evaluate this code. Um, if count is equal to two, it's not because count is still one. We then increment count by one again. So count is gonna be two and we'll print out two. We then go back up to the conditional, the condition for the while statement, and two is less than or equal to five. So this is still true. So now when you get to the if statement, the if statement conditional is true. So we'll go uh, execute the code below the if statement that's indented below the if statement, and it'll break out of the loop, okay? So a break statement's really useful. It's particularly useful when you have a while true condition. Since true will always evaluate to true, you definitely need a break statement to break out of your while loop. Otherwise your code will just go on forever. If you ever get stuck in a situation where your code goes on forever, please use control plus C on your computer and you should be able to break out of the while loop, okay? Otherwise, the code will go on forever, and your computer's not going to like that, and you're not going to like that either, okay? So if you think you know enough about while loops right now, that's fine. You can go on to another tutorial. However, if you want to do a bit of a challenging programming task, basically finding prime numbers using Python, I would recommend going through the rest of this video, okay? So a little review before we get there. Um, the module operator is very useful when you want to find out if a number is divisible by another number. 
So, for example, um, if you want to find out if a number is divisible by 5, you use the number modulo 5, okay? And what the modulo operator gives you is a remainder. So if the number is divisible by 5, it'll return the remainder of 0. So 5 modulo 5 will give you 0. If you just did normal you know, division, 5 divided by 5 is 1 remainder 0. And modulo just gives you the remainder, OK? So a little use case here. If I initialize x to the value 1, and I did 1 modulo 5, it would give me 0 remainder 1, um, which is not equal to 0. So that's true. And then we'll keep on you know, going through this loop until x is equal to 5. And 5 modulo 5 is 0. Um, so we'll make this condition false. OK? That, that was just a bit of review. And a little bit more review before we get to the prime number task. So if I had a list of numbers here, um, one thing that I'll do with the prime number task is I have a list of you know prime number candidates in the future. And what I'll do is eventually just remove numbers from this list. Okay. So Python has a pretty handy inbuilt um, list method called remove that will remove the first occurrence of a certain value from a list. So as I go through this list over here, you'll see that I first remove the zero in the list, I then remove the one in the list, and then I remove the two, so on and so forth, until the length of the list is zero. And eventually, this, when the length of the list is zero, this condition is no longer true, and then you break out the while loop, OK? So let's go on to the prime number task. First things first, what is a prime number? So a prime number has to be a natural number, basically a positive integer. And a positive integer are basically numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on and so forth. A prime number has to be divisible by exactly two natural numbers. Typically, this is the number 1 and itself. So the number 5 is a prime number. It's divisible by 5 and 1. OK, that's just a small example. And lastly, 1 is not a prime number. OK, so this programming task is relatively simple in what they want. Implementation is a bit harder. So the task is to write a program to make a list of all prime numbers less than 3,000 using a while loop. So the way I've implemented this is relatively simple. So I have a list of prime number candidates that I made using the range function. Um, I should also note very briefly that 2 is the only even prime number. So I have a, essentially a list here that I'm going to shorten over time using the remove method. And the reason why I chose a while loop versus a for loop is going into this, I don't necessarily know how many iterations I want. So when I first go through this list, I have a bunch of prime number candidates. I pick the, the first candidate, and I say it's prime because the number 2 is a prime number. I just know that off the top of my head. Um, I append 2 to the prime number list, which was empty at first. And then what I do is I take all the other numbers in the list, you know, um, 3 on to 2, 9, 9, 9. And I set equal to candidates. And for each of those candidates, I basically use the modulo operator on one of those prime numbers, in this case, the number 2. So it'd be 3 modulo 2, um, since that's not equal to 0. The remainder of that division is not equal to 0. I don't remove 3. Um, when I get to 4 and every other even number, um, 4 modulo 2 is going to be 0, because 4 divided by 2 is 2 remainder 0. And what modulo gives you is a remainder. So for each even number, I remove it from the candidates list. 
And so the list dramatically shrinks for the first couple iterations of this list because for the next iteration, I have the prime number three at the start of my candidates list. And I have, you know, five, um, seven, a bunch of other numbers. And every number that's divisible by three, I will remove it from the candidates list and so on and so forth. And what you have in the end is simply the list of all your prime numbers. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help. And please subscribe if you can. I appreciate it. It helps me motivate myself to do more videos. Thanks. Bye.